My name is John Phillips. I've got nothing left to lose. I'm stuck in East Haven. I've got the Joe Hines blues. How much do you have to earn before no one can take it all away? Maybe, maybe I'll get out of here someday. Hello and welcome to Hard Fire. My name is Jim Lisinski. I'm your host. Hard Fire is a program of political discussion from a libertarian perspective. My guests tonight are Dee Woodburn, Chair of the Committee to Free Judge Phillips, and John O'Hara, Vice Chair of the Committee to Free Judge Phillips. Thank you both for being here this evening. Thanks Thank for you. Us. Now, uh, uh, Dee, let me start with you. Guess, uh, we should start with um, who is Judge Phillips and why do we want to free him? Well, Judge Phillips is a very unique man. Um, he is an African American man that was born in Kansas 83 years ago. Um, during his traveling of his lifetime, um, he's had various ventures um, in life. Uh, he is uh, an attorney, he's a retired judge, he's also a martial art expert, um, and um, he's a community activist. Wow. He's also a multi-million dollar business person uh, within the Bed-Stuy community. Um, judge Phillips um, has always been, from my understanding, um, the type of gentleman that was very concerned about the community and has always been pro-community and, and a pro-person people person okay. um, and um, the fact now that he's in such a precarious situation uh, in the guardianship program that was um, deemed by Brooklyn Supreme Court. Right. This um, is the uh, Brooklyn District Attorney's Senior Citizens Assistance Unit? Yes, um, actually uh, D.A. Hines is right. the individual who asked um, his former Chief of Staff Harvey Greenberg and um, friend of 30 years from what I understand to petition the court to bring Judge right. Phillips into the guardianship program. Now, this is interesting. Now Charles Hines, uh, the Brooklyn District Attorney, and those of you who are past viewers of Hard Fire know we've discussed Charles Hines before and in fact our, our other guest John O'Hara was has been a, a past guest on Hard Fire where we talked about uh, Charles Hines. But D, um, now why did Charles Hines pick uh, Judge Phillips out of all the senior citizens of Brooklyn to, to focus on, and it was just out of the goodness of his heart that he saw this elderly gentleman that uh, he wanted to take into custody? Well, it doesn't appear that it's out the goodness of his okay. heart. Uh, <laughs> it, appear, it appears more of a selfish motivation. Okay. Um, now, what, what motivation would a politician have for, for putting somebody into custody? Well, Judge Phyllis had planned to run for the DA's ah. office. Nah. Yeah, we have a theme here. We have a recurring theme. Hey, Somebody wanted to run this. against Judge, Judge uh, Charles Hines. Yeah. I see. Does make looking, uh, losing your uh, law license um, no. that doesn't seem so no. bad in comparison. No. So, so Judge Phillips, um, when, when was he going to run against Charles Hines? I believe it was in 2001 okay. that he would plan to run in, right. against him. I know. Um, and from the records um, that we have available, it, it shows that Judge Phillips was put into the guardianship program in 2000. Okay, so he announces he's going to run against Charles Hines for district attorney, and Charles Hines starts the wheels in motion to, to get him put into custody. Exactly. Um, from my understanding and from his associate, Mr. Hardy, Clarence Hardy, who is a, lo uh, a longtime friend of his as well, and also a business associate, um, informed me that um, he went to um, D.A. Hines' office with Judge Phillips um, to make a complaint against some of the characters within the community that he had entrusted management of several of his properties mm -hmm. um, and that he felt that there was some scam going on to try to defraud him out of some of his properties. Um, at that present time, um, apparently uh, from the records, uh, you know, upon information and belief that D.A. Hines stated that when he interviewed Judge Phillips, it appeared that he was suffering from dementia. And how he knew this is because his mother was supposedly okay. had it. So, so, so uh, Ch Charles Hines with his uh, vast medical training yeah, had a apparently. diagnosis uh, <laughs> of <laughs> dementia. Dr. Hines yeah. pointed him out. Yeah. My yeah. opponent's got dementia. He's going to run against right. me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so um, let me ask you this. Um, and, uh, uh, Dee, I don't think you, did you know Charles, um, Judge Phillips in, in 2001 when this case first started? No, no I okay. did. Uh, 
John, you've known him for a while. Yeah, I've, I've known George Phelps for about yeah. 20 years, since the mid-1980s. Did you see somebody who no. needed to be committed? No, no, demented? and what, uh, what, what Diaz discovered, you know, getting into mm -hmm. this, is this is not really an isolated case. This is uh, something that's going on in Brooklyn, and it, it's really horrible. What happens is uh, they've set up this unit at the DA's office called the Senior Citizens Assistance Unit. And if a senior goes to them and uh, has a problem, what they do is they file an application with the court ex parte, which means the person doesn't know about it. They seize all their, they seize their property, meaning their house, yeah. and then uh, they proceed to let liens run up on taxes, and a year or two later, they sell it in an unpublished auction. Yeah. And uh, like with Judge Phillips, for example, I'll just give you one example. Yeah. Uh, Judge Phillips uh, was a very, he was a big landlord. He owned about 17 apartment buildings and two movie theaters. And uh, virtually all of these buildings have been sold in unpublished auctions. Uh, he had three buildings that were worth 800 grand each. They were sold in an, in an auction at 